Hi, Jack. Good to see you. How are you Hi. feeling about the uh, the challenge of facing India in India? Is this the ultimate test for a spinner? Yeah, I think so. It doesn't get much more exciting. Um, and obviously, just coming to the end of six days isolation. So um, just excited to get back outside again. And how are your confidence levels after Sri Lanka, having played so little cricket going into that series? What did those second innings wickets do for your confidence? Yeah, I think as um, a spinner taking wickets in the second innings, always um, a confidence boost. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably um, someone who's never, never happy in a way. And I think, um, you know, there's there's more improvement from me to come, I feel like uh, the way the ball came out wasn't um, exactly how I'd like it, but I obviously have to accept that I haven't had much cricket um, in recent times. And, you know, it feels really good to to be back playing. Um, obviously, that's what I get paid to do. So to be playing cricket again is um, is a really nice feeling. And um, yeah, to get those two games played and obviously to win the series 2-0. Um, so the boys played some great cricket and, um, yeah, it was nice to um, be part of that and, and um, make a contribution. But I think um, sort of reflecting, um, I feel um, good for the cricket and the overs, and but, but feel like I've got more to offer. There'll be an added pressure on you and the other spinners, um, obviously, to take wickets in India. How do you deal with that pressure? How are you feeling about it? Uh, I think there's pressure all the time when you play for England. I think, um, and and certainly I put that pressure on myself. I think, um, you know, I always want to be doing well um, for England, where, wherever it is in the world. Um, like you say, some um, in India, you know, um, there's maybe a bit more pressure with what wickets could be like, but we don't we don't know what we're going to come up against. Um, India, obviously, a great side um, and they've got all bases covered. So um, I wouldn't want to put um, have too many assumptions and I just know that if I can get um, myself right and in the right headspace and, and, and bowling how I know I can, then, then I can be effective. Yeah, equally, it's a huge opportunity for you, isn't it? Do you think this series, do you view this series as a chance to firmly establish yourself as the number one spinner in the team? Uh, no, not um, number one. I think I, I just want to um, do, you know, bring my best. Um, I think it's been, you know, a long um, kind of time not playing. And, and in that time, I did a lot of work um, to, to try and... Um, become I guess the bowler that I want to be and and um I feel like it's all in there I just need to to bring it out now and um you know Sri Lanka was a good start and and I feel like I'm going in the right direction so uh, for me it's just about trying to help the team in every game um and obviously with the other spinners you know we've got a good group of us and um good relationships within that group so um yeah I, I, I don't see I don't think about uh, what that means later down the line. It's just we've got a series to win here and, and um, that's my main focus. And uh, finally for me, it looks like there could be some fans in stadiums at some point during this series. Is, is that something, given how many closed door games we've had recently, is that something that excites you? Yeah, potentially. Um, definitely, we all want to play in front of uh, crowds, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, obviously it needs to be safe and we don't want to obviously um, be adding to um, you know a, a problem you know which is affecting the whole world so um, if it's safe and if it's good then great but um, uh, yeah we, we obviously would love to play in front of crowds as, as soon as possible okay Thank you. thanks James we'll go with John Etheridge and then George DeBell please Jack um you played back-to-back -back tests in Sri Lanka, bowled lots of overs, which obviously is something you needed after not having played much cricket. Uh, how disruptive is it now then to be sitting in your room for six days without bowling a ball? And uh, do, do you use, are you going to use the rhythm and the flow that you established in Sri Lanka? Um, yeah, I think, I think you know, um, in the last year or so with everything COVID-related, there's been some things that haven't been ideal. And I think it's about being... a um, able to adapt and, and um, sort of um, go with the flow a little bit and 
obviously we, it's not the ideal prep, but um, it's been the same for India, I'm pretty sure. So, um, you know, it's, um, I've done some reflecting. Um, I bowled a few in the mirror. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously I'm eager to get back out there tomorrow um, and, and get some days training in uh, before that first test. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'm sure you'll be aware that India and their batting lineup. It will be a step up from Sri Lanka. They've got a star-studded lineup. You're bowling against guys like Kohli and, and the rest of them. Is that daunting or is it exciting? It's just a great opportunity, isn't it? I think um, they're obviously quality side who have come off the back of a great win in Australia. Um, you know, but I, I think there's. Um, I, I feel like there's. It's just a great opportunity for for all of us to. Um, to test ourselves against um, what on paper is probably, um, you know, the best in the world. So, um, yeah, and to do it here in India, like it's my first time in India. Um, this is what, you know, the dream, you know, the dream that you had is to, to come to places like this to bowl spin. So um, I just see it as a fantastic opportunity and, and one that I really want to enjoy, I guess, through missing cricket. Um, you, you know, you have to remember to really enjoy and cherish these moments. Thank you. Okay, George, and then we'll go with Mike. Good day, Jack. Um, a couple of things. Uh, f firstly, is it fair to say you were a wee bit rusty going into that Sri Lanka series, having only played a couple of times in a year? And going on from that, you're one of very few specialist uh, spinners who are regularly getting championship game time in England. Uh, are you able to reflect or sort of quantify how helpful it's been playing at Somerset? And yes, I'm going to ask about the pitches there and ask you whether you think actually they're really helpful in developing English cricketers who then go and face challenges such as played in Asia? Um, fair to say at times I did feel a little bit rusty, um, but, um, you know, yeah, that's where obviously you can do all you want in the nets, but to get back out and play in those games has been really useful. And um, so, yeah, um, that's that. And, um, yeah, obviously... Um, feel, I guess, a little bit l lucky in a way to have been able to play on those wickets. But I think obviously I showed um, from an early, you know, through the first couple of games of playing on those type, kind, types of wickets, which we kind of stumbled across more than anything, um, that I could do a good job on on those wickets. So, um, but yeah, I feel very lucky to have had that experience, and obviously. You know, I mean, the spinning wickets are one thing, but it's just getting those overs um, in as a younger spinner um, at that level is is great for your for your development and kind of maybe fast forwards it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I I, I um, obviously myself and Dom have really um, prospered from that experience, and um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's probably it. That's cool. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll go with Mike, and then we'll go to Shamik from the Indian Express. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, hi, Jack. Um, how much encouragement do you draw from the fact that when England last won a series in India in 2012, that um, for all the runs that KP and Alistair Cook scored, that a major part of that success was based around left arm spinner Monty Panesar your left arm your left handedness is going to be quite a useful weapon isn't it hopefully Mike that's the um, that's the plan um, but yeah I um, definitely think that I can um, make an impact in the series um, obviously we've got a few days training and um, not sure what the wicket's going to be like or anything so not looking too far ahead but um, yeah obviously definitely want to make an impact and um, I think they've got um, quite a lot of uh, right-handers so you know um, I see that as a, a good thing for me and, and some some you know I feel like I can um, make a, make a good impression and and do good things in uh, to that Indian lineup I guess. Brilliant thank you. Okay, we'll go to India Media. We've got Shamik and then Anun, and then we'll finish with Vivek Krishnan. So, Shamik, over to you. Yeah. Hi, Jack. Uh, Jack, when uh, in 2001, Nasser Hussain captained England in India, 
I mean, he successfully employed a leg trap with Ashley Giles bowling on and on or outside the leg stump, and restricting uh, a very strong batting lineup, and also taking a fifer. Do you think for a left arm spinner, this series also against Kohli and company, uh, this could be a go-to a tactic? This could be a go-to tactic. Did you say he's bowling over the wicket? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so that, yeah, it could be definitely, and that's something that we've, um, you know, we've talked about in Sri Lanka. Definitely is is um, I guess changing our angles and um, being adaptable uh, within. I'd say um, speaking to Jado is something that he found um, really helpful bowling over the wicket. You know, for him, like for his action as well. So. I mean, I prefer to bowl round the wicket. Um, I feel like I've got more missiles in in play, um, and I wouldn't want to, yeah, I guess, change something just um, just because someone else did it. So I think it's about sticking to your strengths and and um, and doing that. So um, yeah, but it it might be something that um, we can use at some point for sure. Thank you. So we'll go to Anuj and then Vivek. Uh, hi, Jack. Jack, uh, Jack, you had no problems in dismissing the Sri Lankan batsmen in the recently concluded series. But looking at the way how India batted against Australia, according to you, which Indian batsman will act as a major roadblock or will be a major challenge for you in the upcoming series? Um, yeah, well, we've been watching a little bit of analysis on, on the Indian batters. And um, so, yeah, kind of... Um, getting to know how they play and um, I think um, they're all going to um, cause certain um, kind of problems, I guess. But, um, you know, it's, it's I had that experience in Sri Lanka as well with um, guys like Angelo Matthews, um, you know, found um, him tough to bowl at. So I guess um, playing in Sri Lanka and playing on those wickets um, is a is a good experience to kind of draw on um so soon uh, like so soon we're playing um india so um yeah i i think it's um mainly about um sticking to what i do well and knowing that that uh, you know i've had experience of that working against some um very good batters in the world so um i don't um want to complicate things too much I obviously be aware of their strengths but um yeah it's going to be um about uh, sticking to what I do. Okay, we will go last to Vivek and then uh, Serenjoy. Vivek, go ahead. Uh, hello, Jack. Uh, Jack, uh, as mentioned earlier, during the 2012 series, uh, Graham Swan and Monty Panesar had uh, quite a lot of success. Have you been uh, watching those videos and uh, what do you think you can learn from what they did well here? And also, Monty's strength was bowling quick, uh, quickly on Indian pitches. Is that something that you feel is your strength as well? Uh, or do you prefer a slower pace? Um, so, yeah, I guess um, from watching, there are two bowlers that I love to watch and um, you know, I've watched watch a lot of spin videos and um, sort of try and take things from, from everyone I watch. But um, I think, um, yeah, Monty bowled an amazing um, pace, strong pace on, you know, and that on the spinning wicket can be very tricky. I think um, for me, I'm probably not going to be bowling at the same um, speeds, but, you know, it's probably more about how um, the ball gets there in terms of um, trajectory and um, things like that. So, um, you know, there's been some some very successful bowlers who who still bowl who don't bowl as fast as as Monty. So, I think um, for me again, it's it's um, knowing what my optimum pace is and and you know going up and down a little bit from there. But um, you know, trying to get as much energy on the ball and and um, deceive them that way. So um, yeah, again. Um, I'm always looking at ways to to be as strong as possible in my action and bowl as far, uh, you know, be able to bowl fast, be able to bowl really slow, and um, try and do what the di the wicket dictates. But um, you know, everyone has a has a optimum pace, and I think it's important to to try and stick to that as much as possible. Thank you. Last question, Stringjoy. Hey Jack, so. 
Uh, Johnny Besto is uh, not with you guys right now, so I just wanted to ask that few days back, Graham Thorpe said that he's coming back. He'll be joining the squad after the second uh, first test. Then next day, ECB issued a statement that uh, Johnny Besto will come back only after the second test. So, I mean, why is there so much confusion in the management? And do you think that that puts some sort of a pressure on the players because the entire media all over the world is talking about is speculating I'll about it? I'll answer this one, Jack. You don't have to go there. There's no confusion about it. There's no confusion whatsoever. He was always due to come back for test three and four. So I do apologise, but um, there's no confusion from our point of view. And at that point, we will end the press conference. So thanks, everyone. Cheers.